Okay, last time we talked about how to compute the determinant of a matrix, and we discovered that as the matrix got larger, uh, the amount of work required to compute the determinant uh, increased dramatically. Um, even a 4 by 4 without any zeros in it um, is a considerable amount of work to take the determinant of. So uh, we thought uh, that Oh, and we also saw that for if a matrix is triangular, uh, then computing the determinant is easy. You just multiply the diagonal elements. And so we thought, hmm, um, I wonder if we could just do some row operations and uh, either uh, either just generate some zeros um, or um, uh, get the matrix totally in uh, echelon form, which would be uh, upper triangular form, and then uh, compute the determinant to, just so we can eliminate uh, some of the work required. So we're going to first talk today about how row operations affect the determinant. Yeah, because if you do row operations, um, you need to know um, what effect that has on the determinant if you're going to try to, to uh, go down that road in order to compute the determinant. Okay, so first thing uh, we'll look at is the effect of swapping rows. So the example I have here, um, I just uh, swap the rows. So the first matrix I call A, swap the rows, call that matrix B. And uh, obviously we know the determinant of A is just AD minus BC. The determinant of B is BC minus AD, which is the negative of AD minus BC. So we have the determinant of A equals minus the determinant of B. And uh, this holds true uh, no matter what uh, size your matrix is. So we have a theorem that says um, if you have uh, um, a matrix A and you exchange two rows or swap two rows of A to produce B, then the determinant of B is just the negative of the determinant of A. Okay. So um, if you swapped rows again, um, you'd negate the determinant again. So suppose we have this example. There's a 3 by 3. Let's just suppose the determinant of this matrix is T. Then we swap the first two rows and the determinant of this matrix we've negated the determinant of the original one so the determinant of this one is negative T then if we swap two rows again so uh, to get to this this matrix here I have uh, interchanged um, the uh, second and third rows of the the previous matrix and so I've negated the determinant again so it's the determinant will be negative of the determinant here, which is negative t, and notice we're back to where we started. So uh, as you interchange rows, that just negates the determinant. So um, um, it, if you do two of them, then you're back to where you started. All right, uh, another row operation. Here we're multiplying uh, a constant by one row and adding to another. So again, the determinant of A is just AD minus BC. Determinant of B um, is A times KB plus D minus B times KA plus C. And we can do a little algebra. Notice that the KAB terms, there's two of them, and they cancel each other out. So you're just left with AD minus BC. So this with this row operation you don't change the determinant at all which is uh, kind of nice because we know that when we're doing row operations on a matrix this is the one we're doing 99 percent of the time and so it has absolutely no effect on the determinant okay so another theorem if you mult if a multiple of one row of A is added to another row to produce a matrix B, then the determinant of B is equal to the determinant of A. Okay, the third row operation is multiplying a row by a constant. So here I've multiplied row 2 by K. So again, determinant of A, AD minus BC. Determinant of B is A times KD minus B times KC. We can factor out a K 
and we end up with K times AD minus BC. So we see that the determinant of B is K times the determinant of A. Or um, when you're going backwards, um, you know, if you were using the determinant of B to try to, to uh, go back to get the determinant of A, uh, determinant of A would be 1 over K times the determinant of B. So another theorem. Um, if a row of A is multiplied by K to produce a matrix B, then the determinant of B is equal to K times the determinant of A. That holds true for uh, any square matrix A. Um, kind of tagging along with this, um, I said, what happens if we um, multiply the whole matrix by a constant? Okay, so start off with our A, B, C, D, multiply one row. This is the matrix we had before. Multiplied it by uh, row 2 by k uh, to get this matrix. Then I multiplied row 1 by k to get this one, which is just equal to k times the whole matrix. So um, we know the uh, determinant of, of A is AD minus BC. The determinant of KA, take the determinant of this matrix, uh, we end up with k squared times AD minus BC which makes sense uh, because we know we know what the determinant of this one is right it was the one we looked at previously and it was just k times the determinant of a so we just did one more row operation multiplying a row another row by k and so we should incur that k term one more time and hence we get the k squared okay so the determinant of k times a matrix now this this is uh, just in general, not a row operation here, but if you just multiply k times the whole matrix, um, um, you get k squared times the determinant of a. That's for this case with a 2 by 2. Um, notice that if a had been 3 by 3, we would have had to multiply each of three rows by k, and we would incur that k term three times, not two, as in this case. So in general, if A is n by n and K is a scalar, then the determinant of K times A is K to the n times the determinant of A. Okay? So if A is 3 by 3, you're going to get K cubed. If it's 4 by 4, you're going to get a K to the fourth term. Okay, so here's an example of how you can use these ideas that we've talked about to compute the determinant. Now, if we were just doing this one straight away using cofactor expansion, uh, we would clearly expand about the, third, the fourth column here. Um, but notice that it's simple to do uh, one, one row operation here and generate another zero in this column, which will eliminate uh, a significant amount of work. You know, as it is, we, need, we would need to do two three-by-three three determinants. But if we do one row operation to generate a zero here where the six is, then we've cut our work in half because uh, then we only need to evaluate one 3 by 3 determinant. So let's do um, 2 times row 4 or negative 2 times row 4 plus row 3 and notice that that kind of uh, row operation recall does not change the determinant. Okay so if we do that um, we can uh, do this row operation, uh, we get this matrix, notice a zero here where the six was, and then um, we just uh, expand about the last column, so uh, we need this three, we need to figure out what sign goes with the three, so start here, one one position is a plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, so it's plus three, times the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix sitting right here. Okay, so that's what I have here. And then uh, I've expanded about the third row, um, which um, now I'm seeing that this is not looking right because this should be negative 3 here. Oh, no, 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 negative 3 here. My mistake. This 3 here comes from the ones outside, and then when I expand about the third row, the negative 3 is right here. All right, so, and the negative 3 is in a plus position because we start with a 1, 1. That's plus, minus, plus. So we have plus negative 3, okay, times uh, this 2 by 2. And then we got a 0, so we can skip that. So it would be minus 0, then plus negative 2. 
So here's the other term. And if we continue to work it out, uh, we end up with 114. Okay, so that one's pretty straightforward. Um, I want to show you one more um, just uh, that has a little more um, work involved. And for that, I'm going to go to Maple just because uh, that kind of makes it a little bit easier. Um, so I've got it set up. Um, here's uh, the matrix that we're going to start with. And um, notice this. I guess I could do a row operation to generate a zero in the uh, third uh, column here. That would probably make life easier. Be much actually. That would be the way to go if you were actually doing this by hand. Um, but I would have wanted to illustrate the concept of um, of how you could um, use these row operations. So I have actually done the row operations to get it in triangular form, and then uh, I want to show you how to go back and and recreate the determinant of the original matrix based on the row operations that we've done. Okay, so the first thing I did was I just uh, um, started out to uh, eliminate uh, or generate zeros in the first column. So I used uh, the negative 3 here to, um, to generate a zero here and here. So the uh, first operation I did was to uh, this command here, add row, what it does is says take row A, so we're oper or matrix A, so we're operating on the original matrix A, and we're going to change row 3 by multiplying row 1 by negative 1. Okay, so this operation is negative 1 times row 1 plus row 3, and we generate a 0 in row 3. Then I do um, row 1 plus row 4. Okay, so that's the next command. Now I'm operating on A1, this matrix here, and I'm going to change row 4 by multiplying row 1 by 1. All right, so the negative 3 plus 3 gives me a 0 here. All right, then um, I'm going to um, swap rows. I'm going to swap. Uh, swap the first and the second row because then that gives me a one in the uh, um, um, one one position. All right, so I'm just swapping rows now. Notice at this point we've negated the determinant. So whatever, if I took the determinant of a three, it would be the negative of the determinant of the original matrix. Okay, so keep in mind that we've done one row swap. All right, now I'm going to generate a zero here where the negative three is. And so to do that, I'm operating on A3, matrix A3. I'm going to change row two by multiplying row one by three. All right, so three times row one minus three gives me, uh, or minus row two gives me a zero there in that first position. Okay, now I'm ready to move over to the next uh, uh, column. And so the first thing I'm going to do here, since there's no nice uh, numbers here to work with, I'm going to just multiply row 2 by 1 7th. So the command to do that is this one, multiply row. So I'm going to multiply row, I'm working on A4, I'm going to multiply row 2 by 1 7th. All right, so that gives me a 1 in the 2-2 uh, two, two position. And now I'm ready to zero out underneath that. So my next operation is to work on A5 and I'm going to multiply, I'm going to change row 3 by multiplying row 2 by negative 6. Alright, so negative 6 times 1 plus this 6 gives me the zero here. And then I need to do a similar thing to generate a zero in this position. So I'm working on A6, multiply, or I'm going to change row 4 by multiplying row 2 by 6. So 2 times row 2 plus row 4, I mean 6 times row 2 plus row 4 gives me a zero here. So up to this point, the only thing that I've uh, Change in terms of the determinant of the original matrix is doing the one row swap. 
So we've negated the determinant. Oh, we did the multiply row. So we've changed, uh, changed the determinant by factor of uh, 7 also. All right, so keep those two things in mind. In here, the next thing I'm going to do is generate a 1 in this position. So I'm going to do another multiply row. Multiply row 3 by negative 7 over 27. And that gives me the 1 in this position. So now we've done a row swap and we've done two, um, two operations where we multiplied a row by a scalar. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to do one more row operation um, to get a 0 in this position. So I'm going to uh, multiply row 3 by negative 13 sevenths and add that to row 4. So I get a 0 there. Now my matrix is in triangular form, upper triangular form. So um, to take the determinant of this matrix, it's just 1 times 1 times 1 times 2. Um, and then to, to uh, go back to get the matrix, of the determinant of the original matrix, I've got to back out these row operations. So that's what I've done here. Okay, so I've taken the determinant of A9, which um, is, as I said, 1 times 1 times 1 times 2, so we could just do that, um, times 7, and I'm multiplying times 7 um, to, um, because of this row operation, because I multiplied by 1 seventh, to, so to back that out, to get the original determinant, I need to multiply by 7, and then I multiplied by negative 7 over 27, so I'm multiplying by the reciprocal of that, and then multiplying by negative 1 because we did the row swap. So put all that together, I get the determinant of the original matrix is 54. And then just to check, um, I'll just uh, use maple to determine that original determinant, and we get 54 again. So this is a way you can uh, back out the determinant of the original matrix um, by keeping track of the uh, row operations that you did and how they affect the determinant. Okay, so back to this. Um, we're ready to, to look at a, a few theorems about determinants. Um, this first one here is actually another installment in the invertible matrix theorem. Okay, so it says a square matrix A is invertible if and only if the determinant of A is not equal to zero. So, um, so we've seen this, we saw this last time, um, but um, add that on to the invertible matrix theorem. So no, it's a, this is an equivalent statement. Determinant of A equals not equal to zero is equivalent to um, A is invertible. Um, the determinant of A transpose is equal to the determinant of A. Um, think about that for a little bit. Um, it, it actually is uh, it's pretty easy to see how why that is true. Because um, if you think about taking the determinant of A, you choose some row or column to expand about. You know, for exa example, maybe expand about the first row then um, if you're taking the determinant of A transpose, then you can do the exact same operations by expanding about the first column. Since the first column of A transpose is equal to the first row of A, then you would be computing the determinant of A transpose exactly how you would compute the determinant of the matrix A. So you end up with uh, getting the same value. Okay, another theorem. Um, if A and B are square matrices, then the determinant of the product, A times B, is the determinant of A times the determinant of B. The determinant of the product is the product of the determinants. Um, notice, though, that that doesn't apply to sums. So the determinant of A plus B is, in general, not equal to the determinant of A plus the determinant of B. So don't make that mistake. Okay, and that's all we have uh, for this section.